With Goku Black and Zamasu now officially gone, we head more towards a lighthearted feeling as Dragon Ball Super begins to transcend into the next arc, but even in between that, we'll be getting some filler arcs to tell the stories in between, and this episode in particular told that very story. What's going on, Dragon Ball fans? Welcome to my Dragon Ball Super episode 68 review and breakdown entitled Come Forward Shenlong, whose wish shall be granted, leading into the next exciting episode of Dragon Ball Super episode 69, and what will be very good. Now, keep in mind, guys, this video will contain mass amounts of spoilers so in case you guys have not seen dragon ball super episode 68 tune off of this video go watch the episode and come back so we can talk about dragon ball super down in the comments now again this episode was very very light-hearted we see how greedy everyone got once everyone saw that shenron had been summoned by goku in which case goku wanted to summon shenron for the sole fact of reviving king kai but it turns out that wasn't the case now i do want to touch up on the episode preview for episode 69 now we get to see a Raleigh's there, Vegeta's there, Beerus is there, Goku is there, everyone is there, and it seems as if Vegeta this time around is going to be wearing some somewhat of a suit, and he seems to have punched off Arale's head off of her body, and in which case, it's going to be another wacky tacky episode, with Vegeta having to fight Arale and Goku, we see Goku in the Super Saiyan Blue form, so what is he there doing, we don't know, uh, but again, having to reflect on this particular episode, guys, we see how uh, Goku is just chilling with King Kai, he's eating some food, and then he, brought, he brings up the fact that he wants to revive King Kai, right? And King Kai is like jumping for joy. Poor King Kai. Like he never asked to die. Like this dude didn't ask for any of this. He was on his planet when Goku brought Cell there and after Cell blew up, he destroyed everything. So King Kai was very amused and very happy by this. And we see how Goku's like, listen, man, I promise I'm going to bring you back. All I need to do is just go gather up the Dragon Balls and I'll make sure to wish you back to life. And King Kai's happy. But again, I'm really curious as to why they decided to try to wish him back now. Um, but in any case, we see Goku, he goes to Bulma's, and Bulma is harboring the time machine. Now, no word yet as to why she's trying to harbor the time machine, but she is there, and she's trying to do some research as to what the blue crystals are, and trying to find more information, and, uh, next week's episode is entitled Goku vs. Arale, uh, the world ends in a wacky battle, so again, it's gonna be another lighthearted feel, um, but we see how Bulma is there, and she's trying to, like, do more research as to where to get more blue crystals, uh, which is somewhat of, like, the fuel source. I would say for the time machine um, and we see how Goku shows up and Goku pretty much uh, explains to Bulma how he needs uh, Bulma's radar to find all the Dragon Balls and stuff but even prior to Goku even getting there we see how she's researching a replacement for the blue crystal ring that we saw and we see how Goku stops by and he asks for the Dragon Radar and Bulma begins to freak out because she doesn't want anybody finding out about this um, because again keep in mind what Jocko said manipulating time is a serious galactic offense so she doesn't want Jocko or anyone else catching you know whiff of this that she's hard bring another time machine especially after what just happened with Zamasu and Goku Black uh, so she agrees and she realizes that something uh, could be in it for her at the long run so she gives Goku the Dragon Balls and uh, poor Goku goes off and he takes off and he's, and he's looking for all the Dragon Balls he collects all the Dragon Balls but in the meantime we see how Chi Chi uh, Marin and 18 are out and about shopping and 18 wonders um, if there's anything she can get Krillin because she I mean she's married to the guy obviously so it, it's a good gesture for her to get Krillin something, um, and she's asking Chi Chi, and she's trying to look around to get Krillin something, poor Krillin's out there off, you know, working and whatnot, so she's trying to get her husband something good, um, in the meantime, we see how Beerus and Whis stop by Capsule Corporation, uh, for food, and Bulma begins to freak out, because once again, she doesn't want anyone finding out about the time machine, or about the blue crystals, so she takes Beerus and Whis to a restaurant, and they're eating crabs, and Beerus being Beerus, he's playing with his food, and we see how, you know, she's trying to keep Beerus in the dark with, uh, the time machine and stuff, and we see how Bulma is trying to make light of all this, uh, but as soon as Goku wishes and he tries to get Shenron to grant him his wish, the sky, you know, begins to turn dark, and the last time we technically saw Shenron, I believe, was when they resurrected Frieza, so everyone sees that the sky is getting dark and everyone sees the dragon, and everyone rushes to see who summoned the dragon and what's going on, and once they see Goku, you know, making, trying to make his wish, um, everyone just seems to hawk Goku's face, everyone's like, no, give me the wish, give me the wish, 18 wants to wish for something to get to Krillin, and uh, Master Roshi being a perv, he's trying to wish for hot babes and lots of naked girls, and we see how Goten and Trunks get there, 
and they don't even know why they're there. I mean, they don't even know what they're gonna wish for. They just want to see if making a wish would even work. So we see Peel Off. I think Peel Off uh, was definitely one of the MVPs here because um, at first glance he was knocked out and, and knocked into the building by Goten and Trunks after he tried to make his wish. Uh, he was running towards Shenron until they knocked him into the building. Then we see Mai and Shu attempt to pull him out of the rubble, and then they actually fling him like an extra 15 feet across the ground. And then we see him get run over by Bulma as soon as Bulma finds out that Shenron has been summoned. So you know. Well, poor peel off he had no chance this dude had zero chance of getting any one of his wishes granted so you know eventually enough uh we see beerus and Whis get there and goku's trying to ask everyone and tell everyone that he promised king kai that he was gonna make the wish and king kai's on standby king kai is like as happy as like anyone could ever be but ultimately his wish of being revived becomes you know something of the past because later on we see how Shenron begins to get very impatient and we see Gohan arrive with Pan and Gohan wants you know the dragon to grant him his wish because Pan is very sick and the earth medicine can't really do nothing for Saiyans which is really weird because um she's not just a full-blooded Saiyan she's a hybrid she's a half human half Saiyan so I mean how how earthly medicine doesn't apply to Pan is beyond me but um he wishes for you know the dragon to grant him his wish and and making Pan feel better and Pan is another MVP like she is the cutest thing I think in Dragon Ball period uh, she is the cutest little thing because after she was done um, being healed and after she got better she leaped out of the blanket she was all happy and stuff and we see how cute she was and she fell into Gohan's arms and once Gohan left like that was that like it was over and done with so we see how Goku and everyone is trying to like figure out what's going on and Shenron begins to get very impatient and then we get to see how uh, Bulma pretty much threatened Shenron that Beerus is around and we all know how that went down and uh, he begins to get really really scared and then towards the very end we see how Beerus shows up uh, he has the uh, blue crystal in his hands and he figured out what exactly Bulma was up to so that wasn't pretty uh, thrilling for her because she realized well, right then and there she was caught in the act and harboring the time machine and Beerus ends up destroying the time machine and that's the end of that so no more time machine no more hiding the time machine Beerus figured it out and he destroyed it and then even after he did that What's funny is seeing uh, Shenron's reaction because Shenron was just like he was freaking out He was like what in the hell and uh, he knew that you know Beerus was very uh, ferocious when it came to certain things and Shenron had no patience he was trembling he got up and he left and that was the end of that I mean King Kai was pissed because he wasn't able to be revived now however going into next week's episode now I don't know if it's just me here, uh, but I really hope that this is the case. But it looks like Trunks and Goten might be growing up here. I mean, that's that's been a flaw in Dragon Ball for so long now that everyone stays the same. So I really hope that we get to see Trunks and Goten just age a little bit as they become teens. Uh, but we get to see Vegeta in a suit, and we get to see Vegeta battling Arale. We see how Goku's cocking his Kamehameha wave, so we don't really know what's going on. Obviously enough, it's going to be a wacky battle between Goku and Arale. Um, that's why the episode... So title is Goku versus Arale. So in case you guys are not familiar with Arale, go read the Dr. Slum stuff uh, and you'll find out more about her. Um, and so it, it's really intriguing to see what happens after that because after that we'll get to see uh, Yamcha versus Champa in baseball and then comes the episode that we've all been waiting for and that's the assassination of Goku and who's going to be behind the hit of course. So there were a few shots in the preview however that I do want to talk about and one of them being Trunks. Now I don't really know for sure uh, if it looks like he's aging or not because he definitely looks a lot more mature and in which case I really hope happens because it's been a very long time since we've seen anyone for that matter age in Dragon Ball so I really hope that we get to see Trunks or at least Goten or someone age for that matter so Trunks in uh, in, in one of those shots looks like he's aged a bit so um again it's it could be the fact that he has aged it could be the fact that maybe it's uh maybe he's still the same but however we see how everyone else is having fun so in terms of like the world ending the world will not end um it's gonna be like a, a tacky battle a wacky battle as stated in the title so don't expect anything crazy between Goku and Arale like Kamehameha Maya waves and spirit bombs and stuff like this is not Zamasu versus uh, Trunks or anything like that so um, but this is going to be at, at risk because we see a Raleigh there we haven't seen a Raleigh in such a long time uh, the last time we saw a Raleigh was when Goku was you know trying to correct his powers he was flying around stumbling around after he used the Kaioken at the tournament so he was trying to like use instant transmission here and there and we saw how a Raleigh was poking at a, like a, a blob of poo and essentially that was the last time we saw of her so it's pretty cool to see how even Vegeta attempted 
attempts to knock her head off and she stands back up like it's nothing and we see everyone else is there having fun so leave your thoughts down below guys as to what you guys thought about this episode and what you guys think about next week's episode because I'm just really stoked to see Vegeta in a suit and having some fun because we haven't seen that side of Vegeta for quite some time and it's actually quite funny in Dragon Ball Super how we see uh, Vegeta sucking on a pacifier against copy Vegeta how he was performing you know uh, during the bingo act with Beerus how he ate and killed that squid off and stuff so it's pretty funny to see Vegeta be placed in the center of uh, of, of, just of, com of comedic relief because uh, Vegeta is known to be such a, a rugged and badass character and seeing him involved in some comedy stuff is always good to see uh, but leave your thoughts down below guys as to what you guys expect out of a Raleigh uh, and the future episodes with Champa and even Hit. Comment down below, guys. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you guys are fans, don't forget to subscribe for more Dragon Ball content. If you guys enjoyed the episode, don't forget to punch that like button in the face. Leave your thoughts down below. Tune in for more, and I'll be seeing you all in the next video. Take it easy, everybody. Peace.